The magnetic saguaro cactus, found in Arizona's Ripsy area, is a peculiar plant with purported magnetic properties. It's said to possess veins of charged metals like copper, making it attract or repel animals and birds. This magnetic allure can lead unsuspecting creatures to be impaled on its thorns, where they're eventually digested into a gooey substance. In 1899, Joseph Mulhattan, known for tall tales, claimed to have discovered this magnetic cactus. He described it as so captivating that it drew animals and humans toward it. A subsequent report detailed similar findings, attributing the cactus's behavior to the area's strong magnetism, likely caused by underlying copper or magnetic minerals. An eerie incident involving two tramps was reported, where one was drawn toward a positive cactus and impaled, while the other was repelled and met a similar fate. These events, witnessed by reputable citizens, added to the mystery surrounding the cactus. During storms, the cactus's magnetic power was said to intensify, attracting and transforming various creatures into the same gooey substance. Due to its remote location, this strange phenomenon remained largely unknown until recently. Majestic 12, also known as MJ-12, allegedly was a secret committee formed in 1947 by President Truman to investigate UFO activity, especially the reported crash of an alien spacecraft at Roswell that year. The existence of this shadowy group first came to light in 1984, when a film of supposedly leaked secret government documents about MJ-12 started circulating among ufologists. Additional MJ-12 documents emerged over the following years, including a memo that seemed to prove the group's existence, although skeptics believe it was planted as part of an elaborate hoax. The documents named the alleged members of MJ-12, including top government scientists, military leaders, and intelligence officials. While some in the UFO community believed the story and documents to be authentic, others suspected a hoax or disinformation campaign. The FBI and Air Force investigated and declared the MJ-12 documents to be bogus, with proof they contained historical inaccuracies and flaws. However, belief in the existence of some secret government group covering up UFO evidence remains popular among conspiracy theorists. While the truth about Majestic 12 remains murky, the story has become a fixture of UFO lore. The phenomenon of recurring dreams set in a shared dream world, often referred to as the mall world, has captured the attention of an online community. Users describe visiting similar locations within their dreams, such as a sprawling futuristic city mall or a coastal hotel with remarkable consistency. These dreams evoke a sense of continuity and familiarity as if there is an underlying narrative threading through each visit. In addition to exploring the recurring elements of their dreams, such as disturbing bathrooms and abandoned buildings, users have also embarked on a fascinating experiment, the creation of a common code system to communicate within their dreams. Similar to an earlier entry where users discussed the possibility of communicating verifiable code words or numbers to each other entirely within a dream, this endeavor seeks to establish a means of confirming shared dream experiences. The concept involves exchanging unique keys or identifiers within the dream world, which are then verified upon waking to confirm the authenticity of the shared experience. This ambitious project reflects the community's dedication to unraveling the mysteries of their collective dreamscapes and pushing the boundaries of dream communication. The community provides a platform for users to share their experiences, discuss commonalities, delve into theories surrounding the nature of dreams and consciousness, and collaborate on innovative experiments like the dream code system. Despite the surreal and sometimes unsettling nature of these dreams, there is a sense of camaraderie among members who find solace in the shared exploration of their dream worlds. In 1954, a mysterious man arrived at Tokyo's Haneda Airport with a seemingly valid passport from a country called Tored that doesn't exist. The man insisted Tored was a real nation, located between Spain and France, 
where Andorra is on maps. He had currency from several European countries and stamps indicating previous international travel. Confused immigration officials put the man in a guarded hotel room overnight while they investigated, but he vanished without a trace by morning. This has led some to speculate he was a traveler from a parallel dimension that accidentally crossed over into our world. However, evidence suggests the Torrid Man was actually a real-life fraudster named John Allen Zegras. In 1960, Zegris was arrested in Tokyo for using a fake passport to enter Japan and cash counterfeit checks. His phony passport claimed to be from Taured, a fictional country he had made up. Zegris had managed to travel the world using this bogus passport until Japanese authorities saw through the ruse. After being convicted, he was released on time served and left Japan, fading into obscurity. But the legend of the mysterious interdimensional Torrid Traveler lived on, with Zegrus's mundane saga of fraud transforming into a fantastical tale that has fascinated people for decades since. A mysterious prisoner, known as the Man in the Iron Mask, was held in French prisons for 34 years until his death in 1703. He was initially arrested in 1669 under the name Eustache Dauger, and held in the custody of the same jailer in four different prisons, including the famous Bastille. When he died, his burial certificate bore a different name, Marchioli. The true identity of this prisoner remains unknown, and has been the subject of much speculation and debate over the centuries. Some popular theories propose he was really King Louis XIV's older illegitimate brother, his twin brother, or even his father. Others suggest he was a disgraced French general, an Italian diplomat involved in political scandal, the unacknowledged son of England's Charles II, or simply a lowly valet who knew too much. The prisoner was held under tight security and not allowed to communicate with others. Contrary to myth, he did not constantly wear an iron mask, but did cover his face with a velvet mask at times. This along with other mysterious circumstances around his confinement, only fueled the ongoing fascination with discovering his identity. In psychology, a false memory is when someone recalls something that didn't actually happen, or remembers it differently from how it really occurred. It's a complex phenomenon that can be triggered by various mechanisms like suggestibility, misinformation, and misattributing the source of a memory. Early memory researchers like Freud and Janet explored false memories. In the 1970s, Elizabeth Loftus conducted influential studies showing how the wording of a question could plant false memories about a car accident. Since then, numerous other methods of inducing false memories have been discovered, showing people lists of related words, exposing them to manipulated photos, even having them imagine fictional events. Surprisingly, it's possible to plant vivid false memories of things like being lost in a mall as a child or witnessing demonic possession. Sometimes, large groups of people can share the same false memory, called the Mandela Effect, after many were certain they recalled Nelson Mandela dying in the 1980s. This is often attributed to the influence of collective misinformation. Psychologists have proposed theories to explain false memories, like the notion we store memories as vague gist representations, rather than exact replicas. Creative imagination, sleep deprivation, and trauma may also make people more susceptible to developing false recollections. The issue of false memories has big implications for therapy, criminal trials, and society in general. Notably, some have claimed that certain therapeutic techniques can inadvertently foster false memories of childhood abuse with devastating consequences. While researchers are still working to understand this phenomenon, it's clear that our memories are not always as reliable as we'd like to believe. An intriguing concept known as manifest production observership blends quantum mechanics and spiritual practices to allegedly manifest physical objects into reality. The process involves having a vivid mental image of the desired object, down to minute sensory details like texture and scent. 
Practitioners believe they can direct particles of light to assemble into the imagined object by focusing thoughts and feelings, essentially providing a blueprint. The body surrounding energy field is said to enhance this manifestation ability. Achieving the proper mental state is key, balancing deep focus with relaxation so the mind and body work in harmony. While it may sound far-fetched, some claim to have successfully used similar techniques, with tales of monks conjuring food from thin air. At its core, Manifest Production Observership explores the idea that human consciousness can influence the fundamental particles of the universe. It prompts fascinating questions about the nature of reality and the untapped potential of the mind. In the desert outside the small town of Marfa, Texas, mysterious lights have been regularly observed for over a century. These lights, known as the Marfa lights or Marfa ghost lights, are often seen along a stretch of highway east of Marfa, particularly from a widened shoulder that serves as a viewing area. The lights are described as distant bright spots that move erratically, distinguishing them from fixed sources like ranch lights or vehicle headlights. Reports indicate the lights can remain stationary, pulsate, dart across the desert, or even split apart and merge together. Colors vary but are commonly yellow-orange, with occasional sightings of green, blue, and red lights. Historical accounts of the Marfa lights date back to the 19th century, with the first published report appearing in 1957. Since then, numerous sightings have been documented, prompting ongoing interest and speculation about their origin. While paranormal explanations like ghosts or UFOs have been popular, Scientific investigations suggest most instances can be attributed to atmospheric conditions, optical illusions, or man-made sources like car headlights. The flat desert landscape and temperature gradients between cool and warm air layers likely play a role in creating mirage-like effects. Despite these findings, the Marfa lights remain an intriguing phenomenon, celebrated in local folklore and popular culture. They continue to draw curious visitors to the viewing area, hoping to catch a glimpse of the elusive ghost lights and experience the enduring mystery for themselves. On August 15, 1950, in Great Falls, Montana, Nick Mariana, a minor league baseball team manager and his secretary Virginia Raunig, witnessed a remarkable sight. Around 11.30 a.m., while inspecting an empty stadium, they spotted two bright, silvery, rotating objects flying overhead at an estimated speed of 200 to 400 miles per hour. Mariana quickly retrieved his 16mm camera and managed to film the UFOs for about 16 seconds. This footage is considered one of the earliest known recordings of an unidentified flying object. The US Air Force launched an investigation initially concluding the objects were reflections from two F-94 jet fighters known to be in the area. However, this explanation was later retracted. Controversy arose when Mariana claimed the first 35 frames of the film, which allegedly showed the UFOs most clearly as spinning discs, were missing after the Air Force examined the footage. Over the years, the Mariana film has undergone multiple analyses by the military, independent researchers, and UFO skeptics. Conclusions have varied, with some arguing for a prosaic explanation like aircraft reflections, while others maintain the objects remain unidentified. The incident gained significant attention, with Mariana even filing a slander lawsuit at one point against a skeptical magazine article. The film continues to be featured in UFO documentaries and debates to this day. Interestingly, Great Falls has since become a UFO hotspot, with over 100 sightings reported in the area. The local baseball team even renamed themselves the Great Falls Voyagers in 2008 to commemorate Mariana's historic filming of the mysterious objects. In 1996, a series of mysterious messages began appearing on Usenet, an early online discussion system. These posts, all bearing the enigmatic subject line, Markovian Parallax Denigrate, contained seemingly random strings of words that appeared to be complete gibberish. The bizarre messages, numbering in the hundreds, 
have puzzled internet users for decades. Attempts to decipher their meaning or trace their origin have proven fruitless, leading to speculation about their purpose and the identity of their author. Some have proposed the posts could be the work of an early chatbot or text generation program, perhaps experimenting with something called Markov Chains, a mathematical system for creating realistic-looking text. Others believe they might simply be the nonsensical ramblings of a dedicated troll or spammer. One peculiar theory suggested a woman named Susan Lindauer was behind the messages, but this was later debunked as a case of mistaken identity involving a student with the same name. Despite investigations and discussion, the true explanation for the Markovian parallax denigrate messages remains elusive. They endure as one of the earliest and most perplexing mysteries of the internet age, a curious relic from the Wild West days of early online communication. While they may ultimately be nothing more than an eccentric prank or quirk of early internet history, the strangely compelling posts continue to invite speculation and analysis from codebreakers, tech historians, and anyone fascinated by a good online mystery. According to a retired Israeli general and current professor, Haim Eshed, extraterrestrial life not only exists, but has been in contact with humans for years. Eshed claims that the United States and Israel have been dealing with aliens, and that there is even an underground base on Mars where human and alien representatives meet. Eshed asserts that the aliens, which he refers to as the Galactic Federation, have prevented the disclosure of their existence because humanity is not ready for such a revelation. He suggests they believe we need to evolve further before we can fully comprehend the realities of space travel and extraterrestrial life. The professor also alleges that the aliens have an agreement with the US government to conduct experiments on Earth and that President Donald Trump is aware of their existence. Eshed claims Trump nearly revealed the truth but was stopped by the Galactic Federation to prevent mass hysteria. As for why he's coming forward with this information now, Eshed points to the changing academic landscape and the fact that he has already received recognition for his work, making him less concerned about potential backlash or ridicule. While Eshed's claims are certainly extraordinary and lack concrete evidence, they reflect a growing interest in the possibility of extraterrestrial life and the potential implications of contact with alien civilizations. As humanity continues to explore the cosmos and search for signs of life beyond our planet, such speculative theories are likely to persist, sparking both fascination and skepticism. On December 4, 1872, the Canadian brigantine De Gratia discovered the American merchant ship Mary Celeste sailing erratically and apparently abandoned in the Atlantic Ocean near the Azores Islands. Upon boarding Mary Celeste, the crew of De Gratia found the ship in a disheveled state with personal belongings left behind, one lifeboat missing, and over three feet of water in the hold, but no sign of the crew. The last log entry was dated ten days prior, placing Mary Celeste 400 nautical miles from the location where De Gratia found her. There were ample provisions on board, and the cargo of 701 barrels of alcohol was intact. The crew's fate remains unknown. Speculation and theories about the crew's disappearance include mutiny, pirate attack, conspiracy to commit insurance fraud, an explosion caused by fumes from the alcohol cargo, water spouts, or tsunamis from undersea earthquakes. However, evidence for these theories was lacking, and some were disproven. Over the years, imaginative and fictional accounts have embellished the story such as Arthur Conan Doyle's short story, J. Habakkuk Jeffson's Statement, which popularized the misspelling Marie Celeste. Other purported explanations range from attacks by giant squid to paranormal encounters and alien abduction. While the mysterious circumstances of the Mary Celeste have never been conclusively solved, the incident remains a fixture in popular imagination. The ship met an ignominious end in 1885, intentionally wrecked off the coast of Haiti, in an attempted insurance fraud by her then-captain, 
and a group of Boston shippers. Certain drugs, particularly psychedelics like LSD, mescaline, and psilocybin, can induce experiences that strongly resemble synesthesia, a typically congenital condition where stimulating one sense leads to automatic, involuntary experiences in a second sense. For example, a person with synesthesia might always perceive a particular color when they hear a specific sound. Drug-induced synesthesia has been documented since the very early research into psychedelic drugs in the late 1800s. While reports of chemically induced synesthesia have sometimes been criticized as unreliable due to lack of placebo controls or evidence the experiences qualify as true synesthesia, the sheer volume of anecdotal reports and a handful of controlled studies provide compelling evidence these experiences do occur. The most commonly reported type is auditory visual synesthesia, where sounds trigger colors or visual textures. Out of all the drug types, serotonin agonists, drugs that boost serotonin activity in the brain, are most likely to induce synesthesia. In addition to classic psychedelics, this includes more exotic compounds like ayahuasca. While current research on drug-induced synesthesia has many limitations and unanswered questions, there is clear potential for this phenomenon to shed light on how synesthesia works in the brain. Future placebo-controlled studies utilizing established tests for synesthesia could help confirm whether chemically induced synesthesia is real and determine the neurochemical basis of this fascinating sensory experience. The Matryoshka brain is a hypothetical megastructure that would possess immense computational power by harnessing the energy output of an entire star. It's essentially a series of nested Dyson spheres, structures that completely encompass a star to capture its energy. The name comes from the Russian nesting dolls called Matryoshka dolls. The innermost Dyson sphere would absorb energy directly from the star, using it to power its computational systems while radiating waste heat outwards. Each successive layer would absorb this waste heat to power its own systems and radiate the excess to the next layer. This nested structure allows for maximum energy efficiency and truly astronomical computing power. A related concept is the Jupiter brain, which follows a similar design but on a smaller planetary scale. While a Matryoshka brain prioritizes sheer computational capacity, a Jupiter brain is optimized more for processing speed by minimizing the distant signals need to travel. So what could you do with a computer as powerful as a star? Speculative uses include creating perfect virtual reality simulations, modeling entire universes, or even manipulating the fabric of reality itself. Of course, the scale of engineering required is far beyond our current capabilities. The Matryoshka brain concept highlights how the boundaries of theoretical computing are limited only by the laws of physics and our own imagination. As our technology advances, these thought experiments inspire us to ponder the ultimate limits of computation and the potential of intelligence on a cosmic scale. The mattress firm conspiracy theory suggests that the abundance and proximity of mattress stores across the United States is actually a front for some kind of criminal enterprise, like money laundering or tax evasion. The idea gained traction on social media, with people questioning why there seems to be a mattress store on every corner and multiple locations clustered together, despite the infrequency of mattress purchases. In reality, the surplus of mattress stores can be attributed to the economics of the industry. Mattresses have high profit margins, with retail prices often 40-50% higher than production costs. Stores also require minimal inventory and staff to operate profitably, needing to sell only around 20 mattresses per month to stay afloat. Mattress Firm, the largest mattress retailer in the U.S., underwent a period of aggressive expansion after being acquired by a South African company in 2016. They bought up smaller competitors and opened new locations, aiming for one store per 50,000 residents in a given area. This strategy created the illusion of choice for consumers, 
who might not realize they're buying from the same company at different stores. However, mattress firm's rapid growth proved unsustainable, leading the company to close 700 stores and file for bankruptcy in 2018. While their business practices may seem unusual, they're not necessarily nefarious. The prevalence of brick-and-mortar mattress stores persists because most Americans still prefer to purchase mattresses in person, despite the rise of online retailers. On November 22, 1987, the broadcast signals of two Chicago television stations were briefly hijacked by an unknown individual wearing a Max Headroom mask, a character from a popular TV show at the time. The first incident occurred during the sports segment of WGN-TV's 9pm newscast, where the masked figure was seen swaying erratically in front of a moving background for about 20 seconds, accompanied by a buzzing sound, before WGN engineers were able to regain control of the signal. The second intrusion happened around two hours later, during a broadcast of the Doctor Who series on PBS station, WTTW. This time, the masked figure spoke in a distorted voice, making references to various topics such as Coca-Cola commercials, the Clutch Cargo cartoon, and WGN sportscaster Chuck Swirsky. The video ended with the figure's exposed buttocks being spanked by a woman wielding a fly swatter. This interruption lasted about 90 seconds before the hijackers stopped transmitting and regular programming resumed. The broadcast intrusions were achieved by sending a stronger microwave signal to the station's broadcast towers than the stations themselves were transmitting. This required significant technical expertise and resources. Despite investigations by the FCC and others, the identities of the hijackers remain unknown. Some speculate it was an inside job by a disgruntled employee or the work of underground hackers. The statute of limitations has expired so the perpetrators no longer face criminal charges if caught. Every year on May 1st, a cryptic full-page ad appears in the University of Arizona's student newspaper, The Daily Wildcat. The ads, which have run since at least 1981, are filled with perplexing clues including math equations, historical references, strange drawings, and coded messages. They are purportedly placed by a shadowy group known as the Orphanage. The mystery began in the mid-1990s when a student named Brian Hance noticed the peculiar ads and became obsessed with deciphering their meaning. He started a website dedicated to the puzzle, posting scans of the ads and any clues he could uncover. Over the years, a devoted community of fellow sleuths has formed, poring over the ads and sharing theories online. One key figure in the saga is Robert Hungerford, a retired lawyer and University of Arizona alumnus who is believed to be the middleman between the Wildcat and the mysterious orphanage. While Hungerford acknowledges his role in placing the ads, he maintains that he is not a member of the group itself and offers only cryptic hints about their true purpose. Theories about the meaning behind the ads range from the plausible to the outlandish. Some believe they are an elaborate piece of performance art an alternate reality game, or a secret society's coded communications. Others have claimed connections to the Zodiac Killer or political groups from the 1960s. But despite countless hours spent trying to crack the code, no one has definitively solved the mystery. As the internet has made it easier for amateur detectives to collaborate, interest in the case has only grown. The May Day mystery has been featured on conspiracy lists, sparked social media discussions, and even inspired a few obsessives to take their investigations too far, with one individual arrested for digging through Hungerford's trash. Yet for many, the allure of the May Day mystery lies not in the promise of a solution, but in the tantalizing existence of an enigma right in their backyard.